Hey everybody, I wanted to uh, just take um, um, some time just to just to talk a little bit to the channel. Um, I uh, don't have a, let's say, message as I typically, what I'm waiting upon the Lord, um, for the Lord to give me a message. And um, other than some things that are on my heart that I want to, that I want to talk about, um, and I have um, been feeling a very um, an, an uncomfortable um, um, silence with the Lord right now, and, and it, almost like a, a calm before the storm type of feeling. And I wanted to. Uh, there's a couple of scripture readings I do want to read. And I just, I went over to grab my Bible, so I just come home, still got my hoodie on, I just come home from my uh, my fitness gym. I was working with an, uh, an older lady tonight, she's probably almost 80 years old, and, you know, helping her and uh, keep her strength and her balance going. You know, it's important as you get older, and uh, I truly love helping people out, and uh, so I'm grateful to be able to still be a blessing um, to those that I'm able to help. Um, there's some things that have transpired this evening and, uh, another, uh, false, another false anointed preacher, uh, running his mouth and, uh, and I was texting it to only to Brendan sharing what was going on with him and then something took place tonight and this has happened, something that's happened twice as a sign. Um from the Lord of what is about ready to hit the land and this hour of judgment that we're under. And um, if I share it publicly, you know, my, my enemies will come in and they'll run their mouths. And, but I think at this point, mostly what's coming in here at this moment, uh, I would consider to be people that love the Lord. And um, But right now I've been feeling more led than ever to be silent with what's going on. Uh, how God is dealing with me, um, but there's been some two signs that were given uh, in the last in the last series of the last um, I think I guess you last maybe three or four days that took place, and it's a sign of this of this Madrid uh, earthquake. So, but uh, I've been waiting upon the Lord for a another message and we're at a moment right now where my, my prayer um, to him tonight was Lord you know you gave me a message for this hour that kicked off in 2020 that was came hard against the stubborn house of Israel which is the church and this end time message and I've done a, a work Lord that not was not done by the by the work of a man but was done by the power of the holy spirit and this this anointing that god has placed in my life to to do what i did and and, I, and i've done that work and we're still bringing messages and um but always my mind is is he's the i am you know he, he told moses when you go to the chill to the two you know, to tell them, let my people go. He's like, well, who, you know, they're going to ask who you are. And he said, I am. I am that I am has sent you, which means right now. He's ever-present help in the time of trouble. And so he's the I am that I am. He's not I was. He's not click play on the tapes, just looking back at a, a prophet who came and went, who, who prophesied of a ministry that would bring the message for this hour in the current moment to catch the mind of God of what the I am that I am is saying in this hour. So I, I even was reevaluating my own self and saying, Lord, you've given me a great message. And I'm always like, Lord, but what are you saying right now? What are you saying today? What is, you know, I want, I want to be, we want to always be in tune with, 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 with what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour. And so... There's been um, some things in my mind, and so I'm, I'm, I'm just sharing my thoughts with what's going on inside me right now. And I know you all are working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, and 
I, I hope you're, you're seeking the Lord daily and you're getting in the Word. Um, I know you're battling your own battles, and may God comfort you and give you grace, abundant grace, abundant grace. Because as I was telling um, even Brendan tonight with the man running his mouth, I said, you know, God started this whole seven church ages with a man named Paul who was a murderer, who was given grace, and given a message. And I said, here we are at the end of the age. There's a man named Paul again, who's been given grace, who's a chief of sinners, who doesn't deserve to be in this position. If you, if the Pharisees analyze my life, oh, they'll say I shouldn't even be preaching the gospel. But see, God always goes outside the box, and then, then when you, then when you take the word of God, and correct the error of their way then they, 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 they can't quote scripture. That was the preacher tonight. This is a message of the hour preacher who's, who travels and does missionary work, who just quotes a quote, and then I then come back with scriptures and quotes to show him what does the word say. And I come right at that man hard. In the name of the Lord, I said, you Pharisees, this is why God gave me this ministry. That's why God raised me up. That's why... People who see me preach with such a fiery, the line of the tribe of Judah, knowing that it comes through my life. And people don't, who don't understand it, who ain't got the Spirit of the Lord, don't, what's going on with this guy? That's the Spirit of Christ. That's the message for the hour. That's the I am that I am who's been roaring through, this, through a ministry to cry out against them, who comes with the word. And I've said this publicly. I, I challenge every single one of those preachers, contact me. I told the other day on the message, Jesse Smith, you got my phone number. Let's go. Any of you men. Humanly speaking, I'm just a man. But this anointing and the revelation, the dispensation of this gospel that's been given to me, no man will be able to stand before it. Zero. So the man runs his mouth tonight, but can't quote a Bible verse, but quotes a quote. And then you'll get those like Jesse Smith who doesn't understand Scripture, who doesn't have revelation, who tries to take Scripture out of context to fit his Jezebel spirit that we dealt with you know, many, many months ago. So Brendan caught something. He said, man, here it is again after a man runs his mouth. A sign was given again tonight. And I'm not going to talk about it publicly. These are things I share privately. But the sign, another sign was given in the name of the Lord. It's been tapping to me in the last four days. He said, I will shake the heavens and the earth. So, if you look at Haggai the other day, I was, I was sending these scriptures to, to Brendan. There's two chapters, I believe, in that book. Because I got some of the things I want to read. And you look at verse, I think it's chapter 2, verse 17, top of my head. And it talks about how God would send the wormwood judgment. And they said they wouldn't repent. Okay? And then you, got, you start seeing, then it goes on how, then he said, later on says, I'll shake the heavens and the earth. And then it's just like the levels of judgment that God will show, says in the end times that he will continue to bring because they're not repenting. So... Any of you who are watching what's going on, I, I've got a bunch of videos, and I might finally tonight, I have a, a newer iPhone, so I can actually edit without having to have an app. Just the things I've seen, what's going on, the Wormwood Judgment that's continuing to strike the land has spoken, thus saith the Lord, on March, I think it was 28th or 27th or 30th, whenever God told me to go forth, speak that message, you'll release that judgment, it'll strike the earth in this hour. The judgment angel over the water. But then you start seeing in Scripture where, you know, like I saw the, the texting yesterday to Brendan, that they won't repent. They haven't. So I then I, I come over there tonight, come downstairs, and I don't, you know, I have Bibles, you know, my Bibles all over, and I got one, and that one's open, and, and I'm like, I, I start reading, and I'm like, Lord, I just, what I'm reading is what I'm seeing, so I want to read this, is... North Carolina, Hurricane Helene that showed up a month ago. Even the news itself isn't truly given the facts and the truth of the devastation of that judgment. Okay? 
that the timing of it happened after God told me to go to take to go publicly against George Smith and the Church Age book. Not it not was not to be touched or be messed with. Okay, God had His hand on that Church Age book for a reason. So my ministry is always sent to correct and judge these things by the Spirit of the Lord, and anything that's coming against it continues to bring judgment upon their own lives. And I told, you know, as I've told many of these, these individuals, that's why judgments are happening. Because these preachers won't repent. They think they're some authority. They're looking back to 60 years ago. They take quotes without revelation, not able to rightly divide it and run it through scriptures, but then God raises up a ministry sent by God to do that work. But they're stubborn people, as the Lord says in Ezekiel, they're not going to repent. They're, 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 they're a hard-headed, stubborn people. But he says, you know what, I'll harden your head. I'll put, basically what he's saying is, I'm going to put an anointing on you that will come right against them, and they won't be able to stand before it. So, North Carolina, you, you, there's videos that are going, I'm seeing it, and I'm going to probably maybe add this, do this later finally, and I'll throw it on the channel, but people are saying they're, they are seeing they're, they're finding dead bodies in the trees. The stench of dead people's bodies. There's been a lot of documentation. That's, folks, we're talking, it could be, I think, anywhere from two to 10,000 people that died. Mass casualty event, right? The, you know, but there's a greater one. Angel of the Lord, March, March dream, comes right in that dream. Ohio, Mississippi, Mississippi, Tennessee. So there's a greater judgment of that Madrid, a greater loss of lives. That will get the attention as this is not getting as it should in this hour. Where you got the corruptible, corruptible Donald Trump, Satan's tool in the hand. In the, but God is using him. It's because it's part of the deception. Because what did the word of God say? Because they love, they, they, they would not receive the love of the truth. They don't love this word. They don't love the truth. So he sends them a strong delusion that their mind becomes in, 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 infatuated with it. And they fall for it and they believe that's God's Cyrus. That's God's man. And they're caught up in that narrative in its spiritual death in its camps. So he uses it as a, as a political moment. And there's no repentance, none, right? So Jeremiah 16, I was reading this, and it just it brought me right to that, what's going on, what they're dealing with in North Carolina, but what is coming greater. Let's, um, let's go down, let's start at verse 3. For thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place, and concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning their fathers that begot them in this land. I mean, I heard a story, uh, one of the stories of a man who was uh, who was buried a lot. It was buried by that the the, the wormwood judgment of uh, that, that 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 come through the, the powerful judgment of, 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 of the Hurricane Helene and the flooding that took place that flooded and the mudslides and flooding. That judgment angel. And he was buried in the mud, and he's three of his, his wife and his two kids. He, when they found him, they, they, he said, my wife and my three kids are dead. They said, how do you know? He said, they were, they were tugging on my legs, basically. He got, he's buried. Can you imagine what he was feeling, right? Because we didn't repent. Remember the, ape, the, the, the eclipse sign, right? That was given. And God spoke to me that night and said they, they did not repent. The church the leaders of men, the, all these, these preachers, these church leaders, and these, these, these Trump followers, both sides, left and right, Kamala's side, the, both of it. And we're about a week away from this, all unfolding, that I believe 100%, as much as I see it, that I would see that you're going to see Trump get back in. That's how I see it at this point. But you look at these scriptures, like, listen to this, like, they shall die of grievous deaths. They shall be lamented, neither shall they be buried. They'll be lamented. They, don't even, they won't even get proper. They'll just be buried alive. But they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, 
and their carcasses shall be meat and for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. So my mind is being triggered to what's going on there as I'm, as I'm reading this, but knowing that there's greater coming. Greater coming. For thus saith the Lord, Enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to Lamech, nor bemoan them, for I have taken away my peace from this people. He's saying I've taken it away. And yet they think they're okay. And they're not. And I'm just a nobody. In the eyes of the church and of men, I'm a nobody. But that's how God works. All that matters is, is, is who I am in Him. And all that matters is, is I know one thing. He's given me a message. He's given me a message to do this work for Him in this hour. He's given me, thus saith the Lord. He's revealed His mind to me for this hour. And He's given me His heart and because he, he knows that I'll defend His word. For this is our absolute. Clearly as the message has been given, it's so simple, but yet it's got to come with such a powerful anointing with it, with that message. And a vindication that what's spoken continues to take place. Because God is the one speaking. He's saying, repent. They don't repent. So I'm telling you, hey son, I'm going to give you a message. Go tell them this is coming next. And in some cases, some have happened quickly, and some are unfolding still, and some are waiting to come, and greater judgments will continue to unfold in this time we're living in. He's like, I've taken away my peace from his people, saith the Lord, and even, my, even loving kindness and mercies. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. And the videos, man... The people, the lives that are lost, it's, it's not, they're more focused on, see, there, there is a, the thing I feel in the spirit right now is a great U-turn is about to take place. But it's not the way you think, it's, it's not the way they think it's going to be. And I, I've never felt a time where the Spirit of God is being, is not, you can't even find it. Because, and what I mean is, is the Spirit of truth. Because God's still pouring out His Spirit. He said it fault, false Christ, right? Because He'll still keep pouring out an anointing on them, but they're false. We're talking about the Spirit of truth. That there, the Bible says in Amos that there'll be a famine in the last days but not for bread and for water, basically for food, but for, but for the word of the Lord, the truth. Well, you say, but Paul, I mean, gosh, everywhere I go, um, there's, um, there's churches everywhere. I mean, there's Bible stores everywhere. What do you mean there's, there's a famine? Satan the prince of the power of the air who rules over the land who has set his princes his, his, his demonic forces to, he took a third as I think it was a third of heaven deceived them has his power and his control the Bible says he's the God of this world this is Satan's church so so naturally, when, when we, well, that, that, that can't be. People are looking for truth more than I've ever seen. But it's a false truth. It's a truth that's actually a lie. But he said it would be because they would not receive the love of the truth, of the word of God. They didn't want to do the word. So he allowed them. He allowed the devil to get in there and create Thousands of Bible translations that have taken scriptures away, watered it down. Satan, who's created this whole church movement, created all of them, including the message of the hour. That's that not what Brother Branham did. Not what the messenger came to do. It's what came after the ravenous wolves after his departure. 
and they've created another denominational dead system, along with the rest of them, Pentecostal, Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, not so-called non-denominational, mega churches, secret society churches, the list goes on, right? So there's a famine in the land. And people can't find the truth anymore. And those who are God's people have been blessed by the hand of God to be connected to a ministry that was raised up by, by the hand of God to defend the truth. To bring the mind of God to this hour. Vindicated by the Lord in this hour to do this work to defend the word. So you look at Jeremiah. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in mourning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father, for their mother. Thou shalt not go, go, also go into the house of feasting to sit with them to eat and to drink. For thus saith the Lord, I'm going to read this scripture and I'm going to go to Psalms. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will cause to cease and I'm having this, fe I've been feeling this feeling. Y'all remember on this channel when I preached, preached the, blood, the blood trail message and felt like in my spirit, like I've done the chapter, it's what else am I to do? And then a month later, God says, here, go speak, go speak to, my, to, my, to your people. Speak to them. And more of what I'm doing is speaking to you. You're God's little little elect. So, and I've been bringing messages, but there's something has shifted, folks. I'm telling you. And I think some of you all know what I'm talking about. The level of the false vine is, 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 is there's, you're going to see something come upon this land. It is going to get more intense. But with it, God will continue to fulfill his word, bringing his judgments where the false vine is operating There'll be pressure from the other side and, and what's going on there. God allowing all these things, these kings and places that he puts there for a reason because the condition of the land, of the church, that's rejected the love of the truth. So they're going to get their king. They're going to get what they want. They're, getting, they're lusting for their idols. They want their idolatries. God keeps giving them. He'll give them their Joseph Branhams. He'll give them their Donald Trumps. He'll give them their false pastors. He'll give them all their different narratives to where he right, ultimately is, it comes down to the Antichrist. Just like they wanted a king over following a prophet, and God said, here, I'll give you Saul. So, you look at this time, and all these things are going to be pushing and taking place as this time, which will, which will then, you will see the mass come off that false vine, a releasing of, of the, the, the face of Satan, the power of Satan, that's, that's God's allowing these things to unfold, will begin to take a greater uh, iron teeth, as the book of Daniel calls it, that system, that beast power, and we know who's behind it all, the mother, Rome, Vatican. She controls it all, folks. Her hour will come. That's where the Antichrist will rise in its complete position. But we know, we know by scriptures that the bride of Christ will be, will be delivered as this thing builds, and it builds, and it builds, and it builds, and it builds. She goes up, he takes... Satan becomes completely incarnated in that seat, in the Antichrist. And, and I'm talking to the old lady tonight, trying to like, she's like, uh, uh, are you going to vote? I said, no, I never have voted. I don't vote. Well, you, that, you know, you should, you, you, sh you, you, sh you should vote. Like, almost like trying to preach to me, like, you know, it's your right. No, it's not. It's, I, said, I said, you can't give me a Bible verse. There's not a scripture that tells me I, I have to go vote. And I said, I try to tell her, I said, listen, both sides are evil. Both sides are evil. Both sides are, they're both, and I started sharing with things about Trump, and we talked about both sides. I said, as a Christian, as a man of God, I said, I put my vote once. It's, it's the Jesus Christ. I'll never lose there. He's my king. He's my president. He's my Lord. He's my father. He's my healer. He's my provider. He's my all in all. 
And, and yet she starts defending Trump. And I said, well, you know, I finally break down a little bit. So, you know, hey, as a business owner, I said, yeah, you know, obviously if he gets in, I, I'm going to I'm gonna feel the effects of it probably because this is Trump. I live in a all 99.9% .9 Trump area. Whatever, right? So let me read the scripture. For thus saith the Lord, the host, the God of Israel, behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. Quiet. Silence. While that narrative is going along and fulfilling its agenda, God is sil silencing his voice, but only amongst his people. Because God will, will, will only give warning. I am recording. So he's been giving it. He's warned these preachers. He's warned these churches. He's warned these leaders. He's warned the nations. He's been doing it for a long time. So he goes silent. He's silent. And he says, don't mourn. Don't mourn for them. Because they brought it on themselves, saith the Lord. As the man Keith Randolph, in his Pharisee religious staunch position, after he runs his mouth publicly to me calling him out for his false stance, off the word. The sign, another sign is given tonight, supernatural. I share with Brendan. He then texted me and said, did this happen after this man? Or did, he, did this happen tonight? I said, yeah, it just happened. He said, yeah, after this man ran his mouth. That's been the common theme of my ministry. See, God just keeps setting these men up. He puts me amongst them. He puts me to speak to them. Florida. The whole man running his mouth, being sarcastic with the whole Forrest Gump connection. And then I see tonight. I don't know where it pops up, this whole Forrest Gump thing. And the next video that pops is Brazil. And the Spirit of the Lord begins to remind me. Remember? Remember then? Remember Rubinson? who ran his mouth against your ministry that I've given you, son? What did I tell you to tell him in February? I, I speak to you in the name of the Lord. Time is going to stand still. Judgment is going to strike. And then the judgment strikes his country. And I put all this public. It's all on my channel. So run your mouth. Because you're hurt. As I'm over here hurting for the Lord, walking alone, despised and rejected of men, carrying my cross alone. It angers the, the voice. It angers the Lord. And God sends a sign again tonight. And as I told that man, as I keep telling all of them, wait until the plague strikes. Because as the dream shows, that's when I see the humbling that's like, like it'll be no other time upon this land. Lastly, I want to read Psalm 74. This come to my mind tonight when I was texting Brendan, my brother in the Lord. Um, he, he, he texted me a picture of, uh, of, of, of seeing two rainbows tonight, but before he texted me that, I was sharing with him the conversation with this Randolph. And I said, you know what? I said, they all, they all, they all don't want to talk about all the other quotes. Or really, I'm talking about a ministry that's going to rise up double portion. Under the spirit of Elijah. 
which affects the weather. Can speak, thus saith the Lord, and these things take place. As it's been happening in this hour. He sends me the pictures, and right away in the Spirit of God, as I'm coming home, you know, you're carrying this weight for the Lord. And I'm and then I text this back to him a picture that y'all are familiar with this that appeared 2007 right over top of where I was at, my mom and dad's. This is the, the cloud, the Revelations 10, the very revelation of my ministry, and I got right on the back here. Double portion. And everything that's going on, and God has ways of like comforting me with what I'm doing. It's just the work I'm doing. I'm doing this with him. And it's human nature that when something is happening live in the present, I am that I am moment, they reject it, they hate it, they persecute it, they crucify it, they kill it, they seek to destroy it. But it's usually after it's gone, they'll look back years later and say, you know what, wow, that was, oh, wow, that. And then they'll, 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 they'll talk about your sermons then and they'll, they'll look back at you. But the bride of Christ, like in the days of Noah, they'll recognize it. They'll see the word of God coming forth. They stay with the word because they recognize it, it's bringing the word. So Psalm 74 come to my mind tonight, and I text, text my brother Brendan about it. And this is what the Lord gave me. This is what happened after this. this I can sh shift. There's a change going on, and it's been, you know, I, the Lord could give me a message tomorrow to bring. That's something I'm supposed to bring, and, and, it, it, and it, it'll be directed by God as a sniper for the Lord. It'll be right on point, and it'll do just what he wants it to do. That's why I'm not on here trying to, like, just put out content. I mean, just, you know, everything that I've been doing for the Lord, every that first four years of constantly bringing, that was the anointing that God put on me for that hour. I had to do that work. I had to labor and labor and keep bringing it and bringing it and bringing it. And I feel like right now, it's, 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 it, everything then was calculated. He just kept pouring. Because he took 25 or 30 years or more of preparation of all the backside of a desert, of all the experiences in these false churches and false preachers and message of the hour and all these other different churches, revealing revelation and putting all this in me. So when I showed up, it just came flowing out of me to bring the message for this hour. So now it's like, Lord, calculated, calculated. But I wanted to talk to the channel tonight and put something out for you all. God bless you all. I mean, the little flock of God, Brother Luke, Brother Luke, you're, you're, you're dear to my heart. And this brother over here is like, he is so, remember when Jesus said wisdom is justified of, of, of his children? And Brother Luke's got a testimony. Man, that brother has come from the, the depths of sin. The hard depths of sin. But he recognizes the message of this hour. He's hearing God's voice. And that brother is so... We've been lately, our conversations have been him in agony. That brother, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure I am sealed with the Holy Ghost. Where's it at? I got people that I know, people in my family, people who come to my Bible study group. Where's their urgency at? Folks, I have preached that is the most important message I've been given. It was the first sermon I preached on this channel. Right when the pandemic hit, I didn't even got a chance to get a haircut yet. I look like a mop head. <laughs> it was that long, but to me, looking back, but God's you're only provided place of protection. You got to have the Holy Ghost, and 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 if there's st so sanctification is when God has taken the cigarettes and the smoking and the drinking and the vaping and the chewing. He gets he's getting all that. He's got to sanctify that out of your life before He can seal you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is your assurance, because the life of Christ is in you, and it's keeping power. And this brother is desperately in agony. Hasn't he, it went like 10 days or two weeks, we didn't talk. He said, brother, I've just been working at my own salvation. I, I am wrestling with God on this. Like, what did Jacob do? Jacob wrestled with God, man. 
And I'm telling you, folks, there's an experience of receiving the Holy Ghost. I didn't speak with tongues, but God brought me to a place of desperation. I got desperate. And I, that, I'll never forget, I'm living across town in my mom and dad's house, and said, God, I'm not leaving this bedroom till you give me the Holy Ghost. He lined everything up. Got everything out of my life. Dealt with some adultery I had going on at my young age. Got certain things. Throw this away. Get rid of this. Whatever he said, do. Yes, sir. I'll do it. Yes, sir, Lord. I want you. I love you, Lord. I'll follow you. Where's that at in this hour? It's a famine in the land. I find it nowhere. Where's it at? Oh, but we can sit in Bible study as we do. Because it makes me feel a little good that we read some scriptures, uh huh, and we had prayer together. But where is that desperation at in this hour, folks? We're 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 in the end times, and people are more worried about so many other things. And Satan would love to let you feel like you can go to Bible study, you can be just religious enough to miss it, and you fall under that foolish virgin. And you miss it, folks. But the message of the hour, who thinks they have the Holy Ghost, who don't, because when this ministry comes right at them and brings, thus saith the Lord, the word of God, the mind of God for this hour, they reject it. They show themselves for who they are. Void of receiving the Holy Ghost. So the, ult the evidence of it is you receive the word. You cannot reject the word because he is the word and he lives inside your heart. You love his word and you receive the truth. I was listening to Brother Bannon's message the other day at No One's at the End Time. And he kept emphasizing this. He said, it's eagles are looking for fresh meat. He talked about different movements that Jesus could not bring Moses' message and Moses couldn't be bring, couldn't build an ark. It wasn't going to work. It wasn't the message for that hour. And Brother Branham's ministry came sick over 60 years ago, folks. But he knew what was going to come. He knew the hour and the condition of all this stuff in the end. And that's why he said over and over, there'll be a Moses rise up right at the end of the, of the age. Not to be, he was the beginning of the age. So you bring all these quotes to them. They don't know what to do with them. He'll have thus saith the Lord, he says. He'll speak things, they come to pass, they take place, and he stays with the word. The bride of Christ recognized the, tr the word, the word, the word being manifested. The, it's the word. So you say you love him, uh-huh. You say you love Jesus Christ. But then when his word is being fulfilled, you, they show their colors. Oh, I'm going to stick with, bro, bro, I'll stick with, I'll just stick with that one quote as we dealt with this man the night publicly and brought other quotes in scriptures. He couldn't quote one Bible verse. Sent to correct him by the hand of God in this hour. Isolating things, or, or as some do, take scriptures out of context and twist them as Satan can quote Bible verses without the revelation. Because you can have you can have knowledge. I mean, good folks. There's there's they go to they go to seminary every day. They get intellectualized to know scripture by intellectual knowledge, but not by receiving, not by revelation. But it comes from the Holy Spirit that dovetails it together. Hallelujah. So, Psalm seventy four. O oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thy inheritance, which thou hast redeemed, the Mount Zion, this Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations, even all that that's, that enemy have done wickedly in the in, in the sanctuary, in the sanctuary, all that the enemy has done in the sanctuary, he calls himself the house of God. 
This whole Donald Trump thing makes me sick to my stomach. They 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 they, they had their their uh, meeting uh, their their campaign in New York. They start off all oh, the, the 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 so called fake Christians. Oh, they just love showing. Oh, look at the beginning. Our Father who art in heaven, where they're praying, they're worshiping God, and then look at every person who comes and speaks. Dark MAGA, casting jokes about Puerto Rico, calling them trash, racist racistic ter, uh, terminologies. T things that remind you of the of the reign of Hitler in his time. People cussing, flipping off. Oh, these are the things that follow that that come with that spirit. But he's it's God's movement, they say. And in the days of Elijah, and was it Micaiah? My, Micah or Micaiah? I always get this two top of my head. Who was who spoke in line with Elijah? Who there's four there was all these these false a prophet saying, "No, go, go, Ahab. We're, oh, we're, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna win that battle." And Micah, Micah, Micaiah, I think it's Micah or Micaiah says, "Well, I'm saying what the the word uh, the word says. This it's the word, and the word already came forth through Elijah, and now it's coming forth through me. It ain't, it ain't gonna be like they're all so the mass. What the masses are saying, one man is speaking against it." Because that's how God works. And then finally, evil spirit comes amongst God in, in heaven and says, let me go down amongst them and I'll get them to believe this lie and it leads them to their death. And it takes place. It's happening right now. It's happening right before your eyes. Thy enemies roar in the midst of thy congregations. They set up their ensigns for signs. Their end signs, MAGA, make America great again. Their end signs for signs. They set up their deception for signs. A man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees. But now they break down the carved work thereof at once with axes and hammers. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. His name. His word. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. The hatred in that spirit. On but it's folks, it's on both sides. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. So people, a lot of times, people read the word of God and they get they get a literal image like, oh, they're going around burning up all the buildings. Figuratively and spiritually, they burned it up spiritually. But also, they burned up things literally. We went to that in the twenty twenty. We've seen this both sides, what's been going on in the end times. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there any among, you, among us any that knoweth how long. So you sit back. I'm going to finish right there and get off here. Battery's got a few minutes left. But you sit back and you and you see the moment we're at and how I've been feeling lately and how the voice the, the spirit of God, that just the quietness, the, 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 the you just folks, that's why when the rapture takes place, there'll be very few that'll that'll be gone. And they won't even they don't even know you're gone. I mean, folks, it's, it's the hour we live in. And just, folks, work out your own salvation, fear of trembling, right? Have, have your, make sure your lamps are trimmed in full. Keep looking up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Love him with all your heart. And if you do, you'll love his word. And you'll forgive your enemies. And you'll love your enemies. And you'll say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen? But 
but his judgments are upon this land in this hour. And his voice is only found with his little bride, not amongst them. He's pulled it away. There is a more prophet to them. Oh, they got prophets, all right. They got a whole bunch of false prophets amongst them and false preachers and pastors and evangelists and teachers. And look at me. I always post it on Facebook. We just had a meeting Sunday. Look at our church meeting. Look at our meeting. Look at what we did. Oh, I just preached here. Oh, look, we just baptized 10 more people today. Constantly wanting public adoration. Tony does it all the time from Africa. They all do this, okay? When what did Jesus say in the word? Let not the right hand know what the left hand's doing. The Father seeth in secret, he'll reward thee openly. But it's a constant seeking of public attention in this hour. God's not in that, folks. He's in this word, with his, with, which is within his bride. Meeting her one-on-one -on -one in the secret places of her heart as she seeks him daily. God bless you. Seek him with all your heart. Make sure if you have any doubts, Lord, I got to know that I know that I know that I'm sealed with your spirit in this hour. For it is your only place of protection that's going to carry us through this hour. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless you.